Welcome back, everybody. Last week, I had Brother Chase with me. We were talking about uh, the realities of the office, the crosses we bear, um, how really brother pastors are the only ones that know what the other pastor is going through. Uh, so today, I got with me my brother, Brother Steve Mazzaferro, who's down hey, there. You're in Mississippi, right? Mississippi? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm already in Mississippi here at Trinity, and then um, also uh, take care of Holy Cross in Hattiesburg. Yeah, because you're the circuit visitor, right? Down that way? Of the of the northern Mississippi circuits. Yeah. I, I, oh, there's man. Two of us. Yeah, so I, I cover I, all of northern Mississippi. Man, that, that's, I mean, you think that's that's a good size area. That's a decent geographical distance. It is. Um, I, I'd have to throw a rock an hour and a half to hit a Lutheran church. Oh, man. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. Like, I'm, I'm here in, like, western Illinois, you know, and. Still, the nearest Missouri Center Church for me is like forty-five, you know, minute drive. Yeah. But it's a forty-five minute drive because it's going through like cornfields and oh, stuff, yeah. country roads. Yeah. But you know, they're they're that's not highway that. driving. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. You're you're doing <laughs> highway drive, an hour and a half drive. Yeah. Man, but no, it's looking at brother pastors and what we go through. Why I wanted to have my brother Matt. I, sorry, I call him my brother Maz <laughs> on here, as, um, you might, as you might tell from my last name. There you go. Have you on here because just like brother pastors know what your other pastors going through uh, spiritually, mentally, it's also a reality of the physical when it comes to being a pastor. Um, Luther making points in the catechism that when the devil can't have us take our belief, take our confession, he'll he'll go after the body. He'll he'll wring our very necks. Luther would all the time talk about whenever he was in a physical ailment, he would say the devil's attacking me. And really it, it's when a parishioner may say something or a wife may say something or parents may say something It's different when it comes from another pastor who's like, I, I know what you're going through and here's how I heal myself, take care right. of myself. Right. So yeah. I was talking with brother Maz then about kind of what's ways we can, at least ways you have, taking care of yourself when it comes to this from a nutrition and health perspective. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> I'll, um, I'll open it up with, um, I had back surgery at the uh, end of 2017 mm. and I had to get a whole bunch of blood work done. And I was in a situation in my former parish where I did not have health insurance. Yeah. Um, and so finally, you know, I was married in 2016 and we finally started having health insurance through my wife's job and um, marching up to the surgery. You know, one of the things that was done was a full blood panel of everything yeah. done. And then we get to the surgery and I'm in the pre-op and three different doctors and nurses came in. Hey, are you diabetic? Hey, are you diabetic? No, <laughs> no, no. Um, and then they said, let's run your blood sugar. I said, Okay, and that's the very moment I found out I was a type 2 diabetic and I had been undiagnosed going back and looking at the symptoms of type 2 diabetics that they have for about yeah. 10 years. Wow. Um, I was undiagnosed and my blood sugar that morning was 384, um, which is not good. Um, at, by you wanted around the low hundreds, right? Like 90 you wanted to wanted between 100. about 70 and 120. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Man. So that, yeah. Um, and so I've been dealing with that, uh, ever since and being on the health plan here through Concordia, um, one of the things that I've been able to take advantage of is, um, any, any brother pastor who's on Concordia plans, um, should yeah. be able to look and see if they're eligible. If you have type two diabetes or even pre-diabetes, yeah. um, we're for, a um, a, a program called Verta, V-I-R-T-A. Okay. Um, and they, what they're doing is they're actually using what's called nutritional ketosis mm -hmm. to defeat and reverse type two diabetes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so what they do is they the program dials your total carbohydrates, not per meal, but per day mm -hmm. to 30 grams. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then also um, protein is a moderate amount at, at um they do it in ounces, but I had to have them converted into grams for me because I was, I was under eating because I wasn't mm -hmm. understanding 
And so yeah. it's, it's 116 grams of protein per day, okay. but as much fat as you need yeah. to feel satiated. And yeah. The reason for that is because fat equals fuel um, yeah. for ketosis. Um, you know, your body can run on either sugar or glucose yeah. or ketones. And so the idea is to make the body run on ketones and keep the sugar level down. Yeah. Um, and I've been doing that for a while. Um, my most recent, I, I checked my A1C uh, with a home test the other day and it was hovering right around seven. So yeah. I'm, I'm coming down dramatically. Um, but, you know, it's not just about a way of eating and I'm, yeah. I'm even more restricting than that 30 um, yeah. that we just talked about. I'm, I've, I'm following more of a, um, I'll call it an animal based way. Yeah, of yeah, yeah. Um, I don't really like to call it carnivore because the carnivore yeah. police will come after me for saying I ah. eat carnivore because I eat pickles or, you know, sauerkraut. <laughs> right, or, right, right. You know, avocado. Yeah. And so it's, yeah. it's animal based. It's, you know, 95, 99% <clears throat> you know, animal, animal products and, yeah. you know, the, the fruits, you know, like an avocado, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, um, yep. you know, and I'm not going to lie. I like, um, the sugar-free, uh, Lily's chocolate in my body. Oh, yeah. Bite. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, ah. you know, I, I, I'm not eating strictly beef, butter, bacon, and eggs as, um, some people may know it from not Dr. the liver Barry King. Yeah. YouTube. Yeah. Uh, or liver King. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> not the liver you know, King. So, um, <laughs> I am, I'm not necessarily, I don't think of myself as dieting. Yeah, 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 the way that I need to eat, yeah, um, to not only reverse type two diabetes, but I feel the best um, yeah. when I eat this way. As you'll notice, I am wearing my wedding ring. And yeah, ink underneath, um, and I have ink underneath because for a long time I couldn't wear my yeah. wedding ring because my hands were so inflamed from all the yeah. junk. Yeah associate as food yeah um, here in america and you know and yeah man um, so well and then like you said it it makes you feel better right and right. the reality is when you're not feeling sick all the time when when you're when you have the inflammation you're just sore yeah. your body doesn't feel good and when the body right. your your brain is foggy mm -hmm. or if you have if your brain is foggy all the time you try to fix it with like over caffeinating or yeah. doing something like that. And can you be the pastor you need to be if you're kind of just in this, you know, bad place? I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say no. Um, yeah. Because, you know, like we, you know, talked about, you know, briefly before we were getting rolling, um, you know, if you're having trouble getting out of bed and, and even, you know, getting ready for the day and, you know, yeah. You know, you're out of breath, you know, from the, from the bed to the, you know, the bathroom. Right. Um, can, are you really, are you being a good steward of, of what God has given you to, to care for others? Right. Um, and my, my answer is no. Um, and so, right. Yeah. One of the things that I did that uh, Chris doesn't know is I actually went to my president and my board of elders a few months mm -hmm. ago and I asked them to make physical fitness yeah part of my job description mm, yeah for the care yeah of others here in the congregation right because if i'm not physically fit and able to go out and do i can't go and take care of you know other people right uh, and so well, that's i like that you did that because it's like imagine if your pastor is just kind of like Let's say you're on the one year lectionary, which you should be anyways, because it's better than three year. Um, but let's I, say you're one year. I have both. I have both. <laughs> but let's say you're on the one year. So you preach. Um, so like this coming Sunday for me is the parable of the good. Or it's not really a the story of the Samaritan from Luke 10. Now, let's right. say I preach it this year. And then next year I do the exact same sermon, like verbatim. I have the same thought, the same words, everything, the exact same. Right. And let's say someone, and because I record them, they go, Pastor Earl, you're using the exact same sermons every year. You're, you're not <laughs> teaching any new stuff. It's the exact, like, not like the same thought, but like almost the exact same wording, you know? 
and you're not doing any, you're not doing this stuff. What's going on? Are you studying? Like you can tell is the pastor actually studying the word each week, devouring it, digesting it and growing in it, or is he coasting right. um, in it? When it comes to the physical, it can be the same as you can kind of coast like, okay, I know I, I hit my peak in the afternoon. So that when I, that's when I do my work because in the mornings I can't get moving in at night, I'm exhausted. So I don't right. do anything. But to say, yeah, every day I'm going to make sure I, I work out for an hour. I go lift yeah. some weights because I'm losing muscle as I age. Right. I'm right. going to try to get the 10 to 15,000 steps a day. Yeah. So I'm not just sitting all the time, but moving around. Right. I'm going to drink right. water. I'm going to eat these foods. I'm not going to eat like you and I've talked about the seed oils. Yeah, right. I mean, you got the water. You don't, you don't do all the, the processed foods, you know? Yeah. If you walk into the pastor's office, it's not like there's a big bowl of uh, peanut M&Ms that he says, oh, these are for the kids that come in. No, it's not. You're eating them. Yeah, and, and the um, church has no kids. Yeah. It's <laughs> like I, I do the ministry for Western Illinois as well. And uh, we, we did our table yesterday. We were handing out Reese's peanut butter cups. So I had gone to Sam's Club to get them, but it's 375 Reese's peanut butter cups. Wow. <sighs> So I had it at my house for a couple of days. That was a temptation because I'm like, oh, man, sure. I can just sit there. They won't notice if I take 10 of them. There's 375 in there. Yeah. But I made sure to get it up to the center because I'm like, I could see it just boom, you know. Well, you, even your boys. you know. Yeah, they, they devour them. Yeah. But the, real, the reality is taking care of the body. Right. It, it's not like, oh, we're just discovering this in right. the church. I was we were talking earlier about the confessions. And this is Article 26. Paragraphs 33 through 39, very short little paragraphs. So our Augsburg Confession on the distinction of foods. And it says this, it says, Besides, they teach that every Christian ought so to control and curb himself with bodily discipline or bodily exercises and labors that neither plenty nor idleness may tempt him to sin, but not in order to merit forgiveness of sins or satisfaction for sins by means of such exercises. Such bodily discipline ought to be encouraged at all times and not merely on a few prescribed days. So Christ commands, take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation. And again, this kind of demon cannot be driven out by anything but fasting and prayer. Paul also said, I pummel my body and subdue it. By this, he clearly shows that he pummeled his body not to merit forgiveness of sins, but that discipline, but to keep his body in subjection and fit for spiritual things and for discharging his duty according to his calling. Condemned, therefore, is not fasting in itself, but traditions which, which with peril to conscience prescribe certain days and certain foods as if works of this sort were necessary acts of worship. The main part there, though, why I read the whole thing in context is that you keep the physical fit in order that you may live a truly spiritual life. Right, absolutely. Um, so... One of the one of the things I like to do while I'm on the treadmill for an hour is um, I'll contemplate how I'm going to, you know, take the ideas that are, you know, on a piece of right. paper like this. Right. And turn, it in, turn it into my sermon. Yeah. Right. Right. You know, I mean, we're... you go for the walks, you go for the yeah. runs. You, uh, I have a friend, his name's Zach Stuckwich. He's down at the seminary and uh, Rick Stuckwich DP is his, his dad, but yeah. Zach was a physical trainer. And he made the point, he makes the argument that every pastor should be lifting weights at least three to four days a week. Sure. And then not lifting like going and doing a little circuit with that. That's okay. But lifting heavy stuff. Right. Lifting right. things because it, it, it allows you to decompress. Right. To, to bring the body into submission, as it were. Yeah. I've, and, I've taken a, a similar yet different path. Um, I'm reincorporating strength training. Yeah. But, um, I I've gone the way of, and, and, I'm, you know, I know some, some of our, some of our brothers are going to balk at this, but, um, I really don't care cause I need it to feel better anyway. <laughs> ah, um, ah. you know, um, I do, um, DDPY, which is yoga for normal people. Yep. Um, so without all the old diamond Dallas, Dallas, Dallas page yoga, Dallas, man. Uh, yeah. Diamond Dallas page. Um, guy had this guy made this program, um, DDPY for the yeah. same injuries that I have. Yeah. Um, with same injuries. Um, I, I, you know, um, you know, I do, I do karate on Fridays. Yeah. Um, but you know, also during the week now, since April, 
Um, I do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu three days a week. Yep. If not more. Um, yeah. Kickboxing twice a week and Krav Maga at least once a week. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, you know, I, it's, I'm, I'm just being active. Yeah. You know, and the wonderful thing is, as I mentioned, you know, with the, you know, the, the job order change when I'm at the gym, I'm doing my job. Yeah. So it's well, not like I'm taking time away from no. my work. I'm, You're I'm trying to be the better pastor thing that I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. I remember at Sim, we would work in the clothing co-op or food co-op to get co-op stuff. And right. I remember working in the clothing co-op and I'd make the joke, there are two sized pastors. They're yeah. either waist of um, of 28 or 82. Yeah. And that's about it. You right. know, they're either toothpicks or they're massive. And the yeah. guy who was in shape, who was actually physically fit, muscular, like an image of a guy who's, he was the weird guy. He was the odd duck. Yeah, like Gurman. You know? Yeah. Now you had a couple guys at Sim that were still in shape, like they were first career guys right out of college. Maybe they played some in sports and stuff. But as yeah. they've gone through the ministry, you know, they're like, okay, it isn't. But to find the pastor who's really in great shape, yeah, not just in shape, like oh, he can go for a two mile run, but like you look at him and go, that dude looks like he works out. Yeah, that dude looks like he can handle himself. Like he he, he it's not someone I'm going to mess with because. Yeah. And, and, and I'll, and I'll say this, the, the gym is only 15% of that. Yeah. Nutrition's um, key, man. Nutrition is 85%. And yeah. so, you know, this is not junk food. Yeah. Um, right. So why, why, if we're not going to feed ourselves spiritual junk food, why would we feed ourselves physical junk food? You know, be, uh, because we don't, put it doesn't have time. to be, you know, yeah. um, like Dr. Barry is one of the guys I follow on, on YouTube yeah. um, for, for part of my um, animal base, you know, you don't have to get, and, and he calls it, you know, the, the panda massage, you know, yeah. um, grass fed, you know, imported, you know, right. It, do what you can afford, you know, <laughs> and, but the, the point that I'm going to make for nutrition is yeah. if you're going to eat anything. If you're going to put something in your body and especially, um, and trying to take care of it. Right. Single ingredient. Yeah. You know, beef, potato. Yeah. Limited. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, if you have a list this long on the ingredients list of what right. you put in your body, probably not good for you. And it's, and it's going to, yeah. and your body has to detox from that. The same as when you get yeah. false theology. Yeah. You have to literally detox with the good theology. Right. It right. is the same with this. So I guess one of the reasons I wanted to have this conversation is one of our first ones is one, it's not thought of much in our church body. And and yeah. Senate and Convention last summer passed a bunch of 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 um what are they called? Not bylaws. Resolutions. Yeah, resolutions. Yeah. Uh, of, of of fitness for church workers, mainly mental those. health. Right. Yeah. Yeah, the, there, the, right? the big focus was was mental health. Um, mental which, health is big, but which is something that you know we we need to we need to address because you know. But what's the um, key to mental health is I had a great elder. This was a guy. This I was in my my second or third year in the ministry, and I was going through a pretty dark time, not doing too well. Even blacked out during a service at one time. I was just not doing well, and he approached me. He's like, Pastor, you look like you've been gaining weight. Like he wasn't being a jerk about it. Right. He's right. like, you just, you, you don't have that, that pep. You don't have that skip to your walk anymore. What's going on? Yeah. And I told him, he's like, go work out then. He's like, what yeah. you doing tomorrow? I'm like, yeah, this is like, cancel this stuff. Go for a run. Yeah. Right. He's like, and what he did, he then brought over to my house. He went and got, his name was Phil Bocock. Great guy. Um, he brought over v, uh, B vitamins. He brought mm -hmm. over enzymes. He brought like all these medications. He's like, yeah. you and your wife start taking this stuff. And if, when you need more, tell me and I'll go buy more. Right. And he's like, cause I don't want you having to spend you. And so he brought all this to me and sure. you even talk like to older pastors, like when it used to be, well, pastors weren't making a lot, but parishioners would bring food over to them. The food they were bringing were these farmers bringing yeah, right. their produce or yeah. bringing their beef. Like if you look at farm raised good beef, as opposed to the beef you get at Walmart. Oh, yeah. It's, it's night and day, night and day difference. difference. Night and, and day that's difference. the thing. That's what they were. So, we're actually not coming up with anything new here. It's no. just we've we've gotten into this mentality so bad 
it now has to start being reversed. And how you do that is, yeah, brother pastors looking out for each other, yeah. saying, hey, yeah, I noticed either. Uh, it, usually it comes across as weight gain, but it could be just, hey, you just seem out of it. You seem right. like right. what you're upset, you're angry. If you're stressed, lift weights. If you're angry, go for a run, do yeah. martial arts, go for a swim, row, right. jump rope, hit a bat, get a punching bag. And hit the thing for forty minutes. Oh yeah, I've um, I've had I've had a punching bag since day one of ministry yeah. in twenty eleven. Yeah. Twenty eleven. Yeah. Yeah, and and you know what? It's not because your pastor is like this guy who has to blow off steam because he's so angry. As we as we mentioned last week, your pastor has the target on his back. Right. The devil's trying to take him out more than anyone else in the congregation. Yeah. So he has to. It's not that. Wouldn't it be nice if he's this? We have to strive for this and get to it. And one of the key things that I'd say, actually, probably one of the biggest things now is making sure pastor has enough money that he can eat well, yeah, not have to worry about it, make the food, have the time to work out. And I like how you mentioned it's in your job description, just as it's going and doing visits, um, right. having office hours, yeah, you know, doing these things. Hey, pastor, we, we got you a gym membership. Whoop, here's it. <laughs> <laughs> My grandparents are Episcopalians, and yeah. they every time they get a new rector, he would get a membership at the country club. The church would cover his go- his membership, yeah. uh, right. both social sure. and golf membership. Oh, of course. Yeah. When your pastor moves into town, say, Pastor, we got either a Y or we, what do you like to do to stay physically right. fit? And we're going to get you a membership to that. And it's covered because we're going to make sure you're doing well. Yeah. And your brother pastor's emphasizing that for each other. So, yeah. No, absolutely. Um, it's it's the ticket, man. And just to, just to kind of pause on the physical, you know, in the mental, you know, we've had, you know, I'm sure you're following in the Facebook Winkle group. Um, you know, unfortunate things happen for us because, you know, we see our brothers, you know, struggling, yeah. you know, and not being able to ask for help because they right. – are, are ashamed or, you know, think that, you know, I'm going to get my call taken away from me. And, <laughs> you know, granted that's, that's not the stuff we're talking about with this because we are so conditioned here to have quick, have easy, have fast, yeah you know, and, and that, it, that, you know, it's normal to yeah. you know, go to McDonald's and, you know, I'll, I'll call myself out. I, I'll give you my order. Of yeah. What I use to order at McDonald's. Okay. Um, yeah. You know, outside of breakfast, uh, you know, it was two McChickens. Yep. Two triple cheeseburgers, extra pickles, extra onions, large fry, small fry, and a large Coke. Yep. You know, you know that that was a standard order for me. Um, yeah, man. Me too. Mine was double quarter pound with cheese, fries, and a Coke. Yeah, or, or that, but yep. but it was always with the two McChickens. Um, yep. You know, and ah. so, and maybe even apple pie or two. Oh, um, yeah, man. For dinner or not. Um, you know, but, man, alive. Yeah. Just look at what I was doing to myself and yeah. you know, and what others do. It's like, no, no wonder if you look at a picture from the 50s, 60s and 70s of the beach. Yeah. With people on it. Yeah. Versus today. Oh, yeah. Wow. You know, it'd be an interesting thing to look at. You know, they, they take pictures of incoming classes every year at the seminary. Yeah. That would be interesting to see, like, take a picture from, like, the 60s, 70s, eight, like, look at every year and just right. see. Right. Now, you're going to have, like I said, you're going to have the size 28s and the size 82s. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But that's the thing is, that's look great. at the average and where it's at. Look at the yeah. average. Um, like, we have this big thing about pastoral shortage. Guess what? You know why you're going to have a worse one? Because you're going to have guys retiring earlier because they physically yeah. just can't do it. Anymore. Can't do it. Yeah. So that's why we, the way this gets resolved and we start fixing it is, Brother pastors literally checking in with each other. Hey, man, you working out? Hey, man, you right. eating right? You doing these things? Or are you yeah. going by Arby's every day? You going by yeah. Taco Bell in the morning? And 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 the, the unfortunate thing, you hit on it a second ago, um, you know, making sure the pastor has enough money to eat right. You yeah. Know, granted, I have enough money to eat right because it's me and my wife. We don't have kids yet, um, you know, versus someone yeah. like you who has – or even, six, um, right. or even Brother Thornson. Yeah, you know? <laughs> even more. Yeah. It's a little, it's it's, a little tougher. You know? It adds um, up, man. It, you're yeah. right. And it's like it, it's a, it comes down to that sharing with the one who preaches. 
Right. And what you want is you don't want your pastor to start taking a bunch of six days because he just can't do it yeah. or, um, you know, all these things. So it, it's a true blessing and something we need to talk. I want to talk more about it. Have you back on again, maybe in a month yeah. or so yeah, for sure. talking about it because it's like, what are, what are things brother pastors can be doing for each other no, to absolutely. actually make this? Like I, I made a joke one time. I said, wouldn't it be funny if there was like the world's strong, actually one of the world's strongest men is a pastor in Canada. A Lutheran pastor in Canada. Have you seen this dude? Uh uh-uh. yeah, So look him up. It's it's he has like I think he's he's carried or pulled the largest plane, like okay. big airplane. But he's a Lutheran yeah. minister in Canada. Right. So we're in altar and pulpit fellowship with this dude, yeah. and he's done all these feats of strength. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, but now it's there's, like there's, there's no way to verify this, but I'm going to tell you how I hurt my back. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, we had these um, raised beds that were given to us. Mm-hmm. They were four feet high, eight feet long, yep. and solid wood. And yeah. it was heavy wood. Um, yeah. And then with dirt, they weighed in excess of 1,100 pounds. Man. And, yeah. <laughs> and I was asked to move them um, where they were because, you know, we lived up on the, on the property at the church. Yeah. And uh, I said, I'm not moving that by myself. But I will straighten them up as best as I can. <laughs> and so Saturday, you get out there and go, okay. And so I, I um, and this is where my line, I, I share the unofficial deadlift record with Half Thor <laughs> Bjornsman <laughs> comes from. Because I picked that thing up on one end and I straightened it. Yep. Ah. And that was that. Um, oh, you know, man. herniated L3, L4, L5, yep. S1, S2. Um, and, you know, get so, you, man. Yeah, I've got the unofficial deadlift record. You know, <laughs> it can't be verified, but well, man, well, did I pay for it. Get a hold of Eddie Hall. He'll help you. He'll help you argue just so Half Thor doesn't have the record anymore. Yeah. No, I'd, <laughs> I'd rather share it with Half Thor anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, that's the thing. So th- these are just things we'll get going. So, brother, thanks for coming on today with me, man. I mean, it was fun time. All right. God bless everybody. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.